Are you interested in managing your stress, uh, reducing negative emotions, uh, being more present, more patient, and more tolerant, as well as increasing your creativity and your imagination? Good. Welcome to Momentum Live. I'm Brooke Scott. Meditation. And before you click off, you know, if you think meditation can only happen in a dark room with lit candles chanting like a monk, well, you're wrong. Just understand that meditation is a, an umbrella term for a relaxed state of the mind. And when you are deeply involved in any particular activity, it can become meditative. And the truth is, it's not only a, a calming thing, but learning to focus your mind and be able to, to tune out distractions, you know, helps you really reduce anxiety. Think about that to-do list that's constantly running through your head. Yes, that, that is what we can, we can tune out for a little while. So look, meditation is not only calming, it has tons of physical health benefits as well. Um, you know, it's been known to, to reduce stress, which we talked about. It's been known to help with um, depression and anxiety, uh, as well as it helps people cope with pain uh, and, and even strengthen the brain and, and, and the energy and the power from the brain. So there are a couple elements to note about um, meditation, just a couple things that we think about. So the first one is going to be about focusing your attention and focusing your attention. This is generally the most important part of meditation because it's really about, you know, training your mind to, to hone in and focus on just one thing, whether that's an object or an image or a phrase, um, you know, even just focusing on your, your breath, breathing in and breathing out, you know, that's something. So that's gonna be important in meditation. The second thing is going to be, again, relaxed breathing. So I call that relaxed or rhythmic breathing, and I'll tell you why in, in a couple minutes about that. But relaxed breathing is just, all that means is taking deep breaths, making sure you're using your diaphragm, and less of, and more of like the belly breathing and whatnot. Um, a quiet place. Okay, so the quiet place thing. I know I said it wasn't all monostatic and, and the fact that you need to be in a dark room, but the quiet place is about limiting distractions. You want to be in a place where it can be quiet so that you're not distracted by a television in the background or your children in the other room or a cell phone or, or doing it at work. Now, as you get more proficient in meditation, you may be able to do it in those types of places, especially in those high stress situations. So think like traffic. Wouldn't that be great? Um, a comfortable position. This is one of the other elements of it. Um, you want to either be sitting or you could even be laying down. Um, you know, the other thing that you can do, uh, you could be walking or running, which again, we're going to get to in a couple of minutes, but you want to eliminate the distractions. So you want to eliminate that discomfort. You don't want to be standing in high heels, ladies, because we know that that's not always the most comfortable thing, but you know, sitting in an easy, comfortable position or, or laying down, whatever. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you have an open mind and an open attitude. And the point is that as, as thoughts come through your mind during this process, you just want to let them kind of come through and, and depart. You don't want to hold on to them. There's no reason to judge saying, oh, I forgot to do that or, or you know, um, darn it, I wish I had done better at this particular conversation or, or whatnot. So again, those are the elements. There are a couple of ways, which I'm sure you're wondering how. So great, Brooke, you're telling me the importance of meditation. Now, how do I do it? So a couple of different things. We are, you can either do it um, guided, you can do it alone, uh, or you can actually do it through physical activity. So a couple of things. The first one's gonna be guided meditation. So guided meditation is sometimes called, you know, imagery or visualization. Think back, I think back to my childhood and some relaxation tapes that I got, tapes, tapes, I just showed you my age. Um, but you listen to this great calming voice that walked you through this imagery situation of like, you know, you're, you're, you're walking onto a beach and it described like the sensations using all the senses of the body, the touch, the smell, the feel, the warmth of the sun, so on. And that's actually a form of meditation is that you're so focused on, on, on guiding and going through that imagery. There's some great apps I've actually used a couple, um, one's called Headspace, uh, and another one is called Breathe, and it's actually two E's, so B-R-E-E-T-H-E. -E. Um, great apps for your phone that will take you through these types of things. Um, and again, you get to set the time, and you can do this in five minutes. 
Um, you can do it in 20 minutes. It's really up to you. So then uh, the second kind of form of meditation I wanted to talk about was mantra meditation. And what that means is like, let's say you just focus on a particular word, like your intention, or you focus on a particular phrase, like I am strong or, or whatever it is, you know, um, something like we, we talk a lot about the importance of affirmations, saying that first person phrase of, of what you want to be and who you want to be. Um, you know, meditating on an affirmation is a great idea. And again, you only need a few minutes of this focus focused attention, relaxed breathing, comfortable position, thinking about your affirmation or your mantra. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about active meditation. And active meditation, you can do this through things like yoga, um, you know, the, the, the gentle like exercises and, and process um, creates kind of a mental clarity and calmness through yoga. Uh, tai Chi is another meditative practice, you know, it's like a very um, like slow form of flowing martial arts. Um, you see it in movies all the time in like cool cities like San Francisco. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway, but then the last thing I wanted to bring up about um, active meditation is like running. You know how you talk to people where, where they're great runners and they get into this like major runner high and then like the mind, the world just kind of blanks out and they just kind of go, well, that has never been me as a runner. I have constantly been thinking about how not to die while running. Um, but what I found was I actually started running <clears throat> a little while ago on a treadmill because I can control the environment, because I can reduce the distractions. I mean, no car is going by. I'm not worried about the unevenness of the ground. There's a constant rhythmic pace. There's a rhythmic pace to my breathing. It's the first time I finally found that running can be meditative because I've reduced all of the other distractive environments or the other distractive environmental elements. Now I can just focus on my pace and now I can just focus on, you know, my foot hitting, hitting the belt and I can focus on controlling my breathing. And I actually go into this really neat meditative place that I've never experienced before. So I was just really excited to share that with you guys. And then I, I you know, I went back and I thought about meditation and how I've struggled with thinking it's this thing, you know, in a dark room where you you have to set aside a half an hour to, to be quiet and chant. But in reality, I think there are multiple ways that you can do it. And I hope that you explore that within yourself. Have a great Monday and a great week. And I'll see you guys next week.